Let's say you're starting your IT journey with just your Windows laptop and the desire to learn. You've been introduced to the Type 2 hypervisor VirtualBox, but you hear about this great Type 1 hypervisor called Proxmox and you want to experiment with it, but you need to keep your Windows laptop for other things that you're working on. You could try dual booting Proxmox and Windows, but that comes with its own set of risks. In uh, a few videos ago, we talked about nested virtualization. In that video, I talked about one of the uses for nested virtualization being installing Proxmox inside of VirtualBox. Today, I'm gonna show you how to do that. This is B from Tay Talk Tech, and today I'm gonna show you how to install Proxmox in VirtualBox. Stick with me. I have a favor to ask. If you like this type of video and wanna see more content like it, make sure you are subscribed and hit the bell button for notifications. Also, don't forget to give this video a like if you like it, let me know what you liked, didn't like, or if you have any comments, questions, concerns, or emotional outbursts down in the comment section below. And lastly, make sure you stick around all the way to the end to get the most out of this video. Let's do this thing. So now I'm gonna go ahead and shrink my face down here so we can go ahead and start the install process here. Now, before we install it inside of VirtualBox, we're gonna to need to download the ISO image. I'm going to include a link to this website down in the show notes below. So that will be there for you avail uh, available. And it'll, um, it'll have a link to the most recent updated ISO images for Proxmox. Now you can see here that there's multiple versions that are available. We're not gonna be installing version 8.0. We're going to be installing version 7.4, which is this one right here. So then you would just click download and it will download it. Uh, if you're on Windows, it'll go ahead and download it to your downloads folder. So now that we've got that downloaded, what we need to do next is we need to get things set up for our virtual machine. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into VirtualBox here and we're gonna select new. All right, now what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and give it a name and then we'll go down here to ISO image and then if you, if you don't have it already there, go to other right here and then select its location on your computer. I already have it, I already have it down there, so I'm gonna do that. And then change this type to Linux. And then version, you're gonna just do Debian. And then what you'll do is you'll just go down to Debian 11, because that's what 7.4 is um, based on. There we go, and make sure it's a 64-bit version. Let's go ahead and hit next. We're gonna go ahead and update this. Now, uh, we're gonna go ahead and update the RAM and processor configuration. Now, this is going to depend on the resources that you have available. Mine is more limited. This virtual machine, it has eight cores and it has eight gigabytes of RAM. So we're not, we're not hurting on the cores, but we're definitely limited in our RAM. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna give this one just 4,096 and just do an amount that makes sense for your virtual machine. I'm sorry, for your system based on your available hardware. Then we're gonna change this to two. All right, there we go. So we got two cores and then we got 4,096 megabytes or four gigabytes of RAM. We're gonna go ahead and hit next. And then here, I'm gonna change this to 15 because I don't have a lot of uh, storage space on this virtual machine. I do need to update it, but anywhere from 50 to 100 gigs should be sufficient for um, for, vir for Proxmox as well as a few different virtual machines. So now that we've got that selected, and or sorry, inputted, let's go ahead and hit next. This is gonna go ahead and confirm this. And all of this is good because it's just confirming what we just did. So I'm gonna hit finish. All right, now we need to go into settings and we're gonna make a couple of updates here. The first thing that we need to do is go to system and we're gonna go to processor and then we need to enable and nest uh, enable nested. Now make sure you're on a more recent version of of VirtualBox because this was not available in older versions. So I can't remember where the cutoff is, but just make sure. I uh, usually you know usually one of the best product pro uh, practices is to be on the most latest version of a software. But I also understand that sometimes that's not always the best move, especially when you're looking for stability and stuff like that. But make sure you're on a more recent version if you're not seeing that there. All right, and the other thing that we need to do is we need to go down here to network. And we're gonna change this from NAT to bridged adapter. Uh, we're changing this from NAT to bridge adapter because we wanna be able to access the Proxmox machine directly through the browser. So let's go ahead down here and hit okay. And then now that we've done that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and hit start. And let it do its thing. It will take a minute to go ahead and get booted up. Now the boot time does vary depending on the hardware that you have available to it. Uh, in this particular case, we're gonna go ahead and now that we have this up, 
we're going to go ahead and hit enter to go ahead and start the install. I'm just going to blow this up. Right now it's working on getting a IP address. This shouldn't take too long. There we go. It got its IP address. Now give it just a minute to go into the installer. and give it just another moment here to load perfect now you're just going to accept the eula you just go ahead and do i agree all right and it's going to go ahead and make sure that you're um, using the targeted um targeted uh, storage device that you want to use so we're going to hit next here just type in uh, your country name i am in the united states time zone is america chicago and then the keyboard layout is fine just like that. So make, this is going to be based on your location and then hit next. And then password, this is going to be the password for the default user. And, and on a Proxmox install, it's going to be root is going to be the default user. And then here it'll say example invalid. Just you can put in your actual email address or you can just put in just change that to a dot com and it will go ahead and accept it. Uh, do the same thing here. This should already be set if, uh, if it picked up from DHCP. If not, you may have to manually go ahead and set that up. Let's just change this to a .com. This stuff doesn't really matter uh, as far as the demonstration purposes are concerned. All right, there we go. We've got all of this stuff set here. Now what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go ahead and hit install. And it's a relatively, it's a relatively um, quick process. It doesn't take too long. Um, it takes a few minutes to go ahead and get installed. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and um, let it do its thing. Now, one of the things that I will say is it's going to reboot automatically after it's done with the install. So, um, you know, it, it, it's literally going to be installing. It's going to be finished. And then all of a sudden it's going to reboot. I'm going to give it here just in like another um, moment or so just to see if this finishes quickly because it's moving pretty quick even with only the two cores and four gigabytes of ram it's still moving pretty pretty fast and, and keep in mind this is built on top of debian so because it's built on top of debian you know just debian um the the standard distro is it's it's pretty lightweight so it doesn't take that much to actually to, to get this thing moving which is pretty great so we're at 65 percent All right, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and pause the video here and we'll go ahead and come back when it's done. All right, there we go. And it is getting ready to be um, rebooted here. We can see it's at 99%. It says making, make system bootable. So this shouldn't take too much longer and it's going to do that abrupt reboot. It did take a few minutes longer than I thought it was going to based on that initial early progress, but looks like just that initial part is pretty lightweight and pretty fast. So hopefully this doesn't take too much longer because it's already been almost a minute. There we go. And it's saying that. And then it uh, looks like it didn't actually automatically reboot. Okay, well, oh, there it goes. All right, perfect. And what it's going to do here is I'm going to go back in here. What we need to do to go ahead and keep this thing. Um, we're going to power down the machine. All right, I'm going to come in here back to settings. We're going to go to storage. We're going to go ahead and remove this from the CD drive. We're going to hit OK, and then we're going to go back up here to start. And this is going to go ahead and start it. And I'm going to show you how to access this directly through the browser here in just a second once it gets itself restarted. OK, there we go. Let's see there. All right, let's let it do its thing thing. All right, there we go. And see, so you can see right here, it's got the IP address and it's got uh, port 8006. That's actually how you're going to access it through the browser. Let me show you. So we're gonna come in here. We're gonna do HTTPS forward slash. We're gonna do 192.168.122.240. And then we're gonna put colon 8006. 
We're going to hit enter and it's going to give you this. It's going to say, hey, it's not considered private. Most browsers, you just have to go to like the advanced and then it'll give you some type of option to go ahead and continue. This is perfectly safe. There we go. And then we're going to put in the root pass. We're going to put in the root username. And then we're going to put in the password. And there we go. Voila. We are inside of um, we are inside of Proxmox. So awesome. Yeah, Proxmox is a great thing to use, a uh, great tool to learn in your tool belt. If you want to if you want me to cover more content regarding Proxmox, let me down let me know in the comment section down below. Uh, check out this other video from my channel if you're interested. Remember, mistakes make you better, so keep on making them. Thank you so much for watching my video and have